Hi there folks, how the devil are you? As always, I'm Ross Minton, this is Grow Your Own Life, and if you would do me the pleasure of subscribing, that would be fantastic. And without further ado, I'll get to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi folks, how are you doing? So just a quick one down the allotment today, uh, feed the chickens. Oh, there's a magpie floating in the wind, it was quite funky. He was like a little kite. Um, bless him it's a really windy day that's why i've got the camera in the greenhouse and i'm standing outside because i forgot my little muffler thing for the wind um anywho uh without further ado i'll get straight to it um i've been picking tomatoes i've got loads of the buggers absolutely tons uh, and i'm dead chuffed everything's really starting to ripen in there now they're, they're starting to uh, really push on since i trimmed off all the foliage let the light get to it get the air get to it stop all the old growth old growth no ross new growth so since I stopped all that new growth, um, and some of the flowers that are left have started to set into little tiny little fruit. So fingers crossed, um, end of September, October, I should have more tomatoes, which will be quite nice. But um, it will be windy, but I'll flip the camera around and you can see what I've got in my bucket. There we go, folks. That's quite, what, half full? Uh, one of those big industrial concrete bucket things. I've had it years, it's been washed out numerous times by the way, don't panic, um, you know, I'm not going to poison myself. But yeah, look at these bad boys, awesome, and I've got so many of these pear tomatoes, and they are yummy, my daughter in particular loves them. There's a good weight in there, good few pounds of tomatoes, and any that have had a bit of damage to them. Oh, you girlies have had, haven't you? You love a nice tomato, don't you? And tomatoes are the one things that the cockerels don't share. Normally, if I drop a slug in there, if I drop anything in there, the cockerels go -da 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 -da, and they get their ladies to come to finish it off. Tomatoes go in there. Cockerels like, no, I'm having some of this too. Worked out well, hasn't it? By the way, if you wonder why I put the stuff on top here and not inside, it's because it gives them something to do. Um, because obviously in the summer, when they are locked away, my chickens, um, I don't want it to be too boring for them. Because um, obviously in the next couple of weeks, I'll get to go out again when I'm down here and forage and do all the things they do, eat all the slugs and everything. But I don't but I don't do that in the summer simply because they, they're destructive little buggers. They really are. You know, they scrap through stuff and they eat stuff they shouldn't eat. And before you know it, they've decimated a whole bed of seedlings and, you know, they've stripped your lettuce plants to the bone. So, um, although they got a decent sized run, pretty big run, and they get fed their greens and their vegetables and everything there. Oh, something just tickled my neck. Oh, it was a leaf, but it freaked me out. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, uh, although they've got, uh, <laughs> I can't be. although they've got a decent sized run and they get all the greens and everything, I do try and make it interesting for them. So by putting it on top of the chicken wire, it means it's not such an easy meal for them. They've got to peck at it. They've got to get there to it. There's a bit of jostling and a bit of boisterousness going on, which is good for them. Helps them with the pecking order. Um, it's so yeah, it keeps them amused really, uh, which is what you got to do because at the end of the day, that you know, when they are locked away like that, they are semi-captive to an extent um, and by that I mean semi-captive they've got plenty of space they've got perches they've got nest boxes they've got places to dust bathe they've got dry bits they've got wet bits they've got foliage to peck at they've got all that kind of thing but at the end of the day they are you know cap they are captive but they're in a, a big run captive so it's best just to keep them as interested in you know things as possible really and they love stuff going on there, absolutely love it. And now when I walk around the allotment, they all flock to that corner because they know that's where I put stuff. So it works out quite well, really. So I filled her up now with beans and sweet corn. Beans and sweet corn. Oh, I know these have gone a bit big. I'll just pod them out and eat them as they are. But they need to be picked so the younger ones can come through. Sweet corn's done well. Uh, I've had a bit of wood lice damage. Uh, oh, you probably can't see it. It's probably one of the ones in the bottom. When I had the strong winds and they blew the plants over, I propped them up as best I could and they've carried on growing perfectly fine. But obviously, 
they were close to the ground so some of the wood lice have crawled up them but I've only lost like you know an inch on the end they've taken like the tender kernels but the rest of it's fine I stripped one back and had a look and it was perfectly fine once I've chopped it washed it and boiled it good eating that is so oh, so that's it really I tell you what though it's a good old walk back to the car when you've got probably what is £10 worth of vegetables to carry in a bucket oh, I'm absolutely pooped oh. you've probably seen from my videos I was out metal detecting the last few days because it's been harvest time so I've been getting into the fields and stuff and so I've probably done a bit too much so my back is a bit sore but I've got nothing planned now till Sunday and today is Wednesday God, I've lost track of days there. So my plan is now to go back home, have a cup of tea, and watch the cricket. Because it is the fourth test. Yes! Come on England, hopefully we can uh, win this one and stop those pesky Aussies retaining the ashes. So, fingers crossed, eh? Fingers crossed. I'm sure this video will probably go out long after the result. So uh, drop me a comment below, and you can either take the mick out of me if you're Australian, uh, or you can celebrate with me if you're English. How nice is this buddleia? Look at that. They're really pretty colours. I'm not quite sure if you can make it out too good on the camera, but they're a really vivid, poppy kind of purpley colour. They're like a deep lavender type colour. I might have to ask if I can have a few cuttings of that next year, or in the autumn, or whenever buddleia you take cuttings from. I'll have to Google it, or you can pop in the comments below and tell me when. But that's really pretty. It's always been pretty, but it seems to be more purple this year. Very cool indeed. I need to get that. Mr Cockrell, would you please, please be quiet for a second? I need to get down here and uh, have a good sort out now. Now it's that time of year, school holidays are finished. I have a few weeds poking through that I need to get rid of. Nothing I can really see that's going to go to seed other than that one there, which uh, I can sort that out in a minute. My greens for the chickens are doing alright, under the football goal, so that should keep them in greens for a bit. Uh, I did sow some more things in there the other day. Um, I did a video of it and I can't remember now what it was because I run out of labels. Kale in the end, one of them's onions, one of them's chard, one of them's lettuce. Sweet corn is picked now. There's not much sweet corn left. Tomatoes that are in there aren't ready yet because I picked those the other day. Didn't I girlies? Yes I did. Still got... Still got a few cucumbers coming. Obviously the chilies are going nuts, which is good. I have got new growth on the cucumbers. Uh, I know the leaves are starting to die off, but I have got new growth, so I'm hoping to sneak out a few more cucumbers before the end of the year. Fingers crossed. This bed needs emptying and clearing. That is burdock, so I believe which I've left there because it's good coverage for frogs and things, it's not hurting anything. Uh, parsnips there, I was thinking about pulling one of them up but I put them in late so I'll probably leave that for another month or two before I try them. Second lot of potatoes that went in have just started to get their flowers on them. Hey hey, who says you can't plant potatoes in July? Yeah. Who says you can't plant potatoes in July? Ne, 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 ne. Yes, you can. Uh, so I had a conversation with someone down the allotment that they were moaning, saying you shouldn't plant potatoes. It's not right. You're planting the wrong time of the year. Da, 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 da. And this person said, uh, "Oh, am I doing the right thing planting my potatoes?" And I was like, "Yep, yeah, I planted mine in July." And I was like, "And my granddad even planted some in August, uh, ready for Christmas." Tomato is doing good. I haven't got a water them today, so I'll, I'm going to leave the greenhouse door shut 
I know it's I know the greenhouse is open up here, but I'm just gonna leave it shut for now. But I'll put the rest of the glass in there. Now we're getting into autumn winter. I don't need it to be ventilated anymore. Do I? No, no I don't. There's three, four, there you are. Let me know how the wind situation is because uh, my little device for stopping the wind blowing the microphone, uh, when I did my little test on it, it worked. And as I said, it is a windy day today. It's a pretty windy day. I've basically taken a dish sponge, you know the ones, the yellow ones, that, um, excuse me, I've basically taken a dish sponge, you know, the yellow ones with the scourer on, I've cut the scourer off, put a small slit in it, and I've just slipped it, and I've just slipped it over the end of my phone, so uh, it stops the wind. And in trials, it seemed to work pretty nicely. Right, pumpkin. This is the only one I've got. I was hoping for another one. Because this one was for me. And there was one for my tree surgeon guy, because I said I'd grow him a pumpkin. And it hasn't turned out as good as I hoped. So I feel a bit... I feel a bit guilty because it was down here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where are you, Mr. Pumpkin? There you go. <laughs> yep. So it did absolutely nothing other than that. But it's been a really tough year for squashes, I've found. Really tough year. There's nothing this end. There's a few little ones, but it's just all foliage. Oh, there we go. Got one there. Got one there. So uh, I might buy him a pumpkin to say thank you. Because I quite want to keep mine for the kids for Halloween. Um, but Mr. Tree Surgeon Man, I did try and grow you a pumpkin. But I've really struggled this year with pumpkins. I've got one, mate, I've got one, and that's it. I've got the other one next to it. There's all that wet, hot, wet, hot, wet, hot weather we had in the start of the growing season. Squashes. The squashes just hated it. Look, I'm gonna have to crack on. I'm sorry, because uh, he wants feeding. That's what, yes, that's what you're doing, isn't it? You're saying, pull your finger out, Dad. I want some food. I will sort you, don't worry, all right? Okay, folks. See you in a minute.